everyone, this is Elisa from Anaya's Toy Box Crochet and welcome to my video. I'm doing a video on whips and foes but before I show you what I've been working on and what I've been finishing, I wanted to show you this. Do you see it? Wire wrapping wire is what it's called. It's um, it's like a plastic wrapped wires. It's electrical tape I think it is. Or electrical wire, I'm not exactly sure. It's electrical wire and one of my testers, thanks Ellie, uh, texted me after I did my last video in which I showed framing wire and I showed jewelry wire and I showed you the difference on flexibility versus safety. Um, I felt like I was more safe giving it to children if I used the wire frame that was wrapped in plastic, the framing wire that is wrapped in plastic as opposed to the jewelry, jewelry wire that isn't. And so I presented a flexibility versus safety type of video. So she contacted me and said, try this wire. And this wire is super flexible. It's so much more flexible than the framing wire I use. And it is coated in plastic. And so she said, try this out and see if you like this. So I am definitely going to try this out. I don't know when I'm going to make a doll, but the next doll I make, I will definitely be putting this wire inside it. Anyways, I just thought I'd show you that as an update on something that might be a better option than the two options I showed you last time. Um, yeah, so, oh, I have to show you, I have to tell you this funny story. So uh, my daughter is going to be doing um, a sewing class, kind of. Well, it is a sewing class, but it's a... Uh, um, my friend's babysitter is going to be, she, she went to like school in which there was a uh, sewing and stuff. So she knows what she's doing and she's going to teach my daughter and her daughter how to sew a bag. It's going to be through zoom. So hopefully it'll be great. Anyways. Um, so we were buying materials. So she, my friend bought some of the materials and it was this like pleather that you can make. It's like cut into pieces. I'm not sure how big the pieces are, but it's not that big. Anyway, so you cut it, it's cut into pieces and they're going to sew it up and they're going to make a pencil case out of it. It, the, the pleather itself is a kit. It's a jewelry making kit. So I told my friend, Hey, if you don't want that stuff, you could pass it on to me. I'll probably use it at some point. And so she said, okay, now I have not seen this kit. I don't know anything about this kit. Last time I saw her, we get together about once a week and we go somewhere outside and we have the children play so, and so they could get fresh air, so we could get fresh air. Uh, since everything is in lockdown, we're not going out all that often. So she gave this to me and I'm like, okay, and I put it in my bag and then I brought it home and I opened it up to see what's in there. And I got so excited when I saw this. Look at that, earring wires. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I was practically hyperventilating and my husband's like, what's going on? And I'm like, earring wires. And he's like, you don't wear earrings. Your ears aren't pierced. And I'm like, I know, but oh my gosh, I could use them for stitch markers. And I was like super excited until I opened them up and I saw they were literally earring wires, not lever back. So I have no idea. Like I said, my ears are not pierced. And even if they, even when they were, uh, my ears were super sensitive. Oh, I made a mess of that. Anyways, my ears were super sensitive and I couldn't wear this. Anyway, so I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. Maybe I'll just give it back to her and say, hey, you try making jewelry. Uh, but I thought it was a funny story. I was so excited and it came down to nothing. And all you could do is laugh at yourself during those times. It's like getting excited for nothing. <laughs> Anyways, let me show you my whips and foes. So I'm going to start with my foes. And the first one I want to show you is this guy or girl. This girl. This is... The pattern's name is Pio the Hippo. Uh, let me see if I can get you a better view of her. Okay, my tripod is done. Anyways, uh, I showed you her as a work in progress in my last video and I was like, you're not gonna be able to see the finished version because I'm gonna send it off uh, to Downstairs Attic when I'm done with it. And I did finish in time to send it off, but there was no room in the box for her. She got left behind. Poor girl. She couldn't go to the store. 
but that's okay. She'll spend some more time with me until the next time I am sending a box off. Uh, she's ready. I have one project done for a downstairs attic next time I send stuff. Um, I love her. She's really cute. She is from this book, Sweet Crochet Friends. And the pattern is by Cook K. I really, really apologize if I pronounced your name wrong. I'm sorry. So I love this book. This is the third pattern I have made from this book. I have made right here this bunny, this raccoon, and now, oops, here we are, this hippo. I will be making the rest of it. My son wants this koala and so I will be making the rest of it because I love everything in this book this book has really beautiful patterns uh, but this is the one I finished right now it didn't make it I'll make it next time she's beautiful I like her um, I, I mean I don't name Miami groomies especially if I'm gonna sell it and it's gonna go to somebody else but this is my little P.O. the hippo as named by the designer <laughs> Here's another one of them that I showed you as a whip last time that I finished. And it's this beach bag right here. Uh, I made the handles. Here it is. I used um, Red Heart Super Saver yarn. Can you see this? It's really, I really, really love this. I love the way, it, I think it's called pooling. I'm not exactly sure how, what it's called and how, the, when the colors mix, however they mix. Uh, but I'm calling it pooling because the yarn's name was Red Heart Super Saver Pooling. So I'm assuming that this process is pooling. And I love it. I think it's so cute. Um, so I only had one, uh, one uh, skein of Red Heart Super Saver and... I apologize to anyone who likes Red Heart Super Saver. It's just not my favorite yarn. I am not, you know, with all the other wonderful yarns there are out there, I have no intention of buying Red Heart Super Saver again. I saw some videos in which people were talking about how Red Heart has changed and it's better. I mean, Red Heart is great. I'm talking about Red Heart Super Saver in particular here. And so I thought I'd give it another, another go. Yeah, this is my last time. I have, this was, I have one more skein of Red Heart Super Saver that was gifted to me. Um, I will use it. I will finish it. But yeah, Red Heart Super Saver was not for me. I will not buy it again. Look at the color. This is what I ended up matching it with. This is Caron Simply Soft. And if you look at it, it looks so close. Look at that. It looks like it's almost the same color. You could tell. Red Heart and Caron are from the same company. They're both from Yarn Inspirations. And look at that. How can you get something that with two brands of yarn where the color matches exactly? I don't think you can. It's just because they're the same company, Yarn Inspirations, that I was able to match it exactly. At first I thought I'd use a blue, which is a little darker than this, which is what I had. But when I pulled out my, uh, I won't call them my scraps because I make amigurumi. Um, they're quite, even though, part of my skeins are used a lot of them parts of it is used there's plenty of yarn for other projects amigurumi very rarely takes an entire skein of yarn so it's not really a scrap but it's not a whole skein that i had and when i was pulling out my um used yarn i suppose um i saw this color and i put it up against this and i'm like how how amazing that they're exactly the same color. I mean, you could tell the texture is different. You could tell this is Caron Simply Soft, which is a bit more shiny, uh, which is a little bit more glossy. And this one's a bit more matte and a little bit more rough because they're two different types of yarn. But the colors match exactly. So, I mean, you can't ignore something like that. If you've got it, you got to use it. And I love, love, love the way. Can I show you the whole bag? love the way it turned out I mean it turned out so beautiful and I hope I really hope the person I give it to loves it as much as I do I really do um what do you think of this new method I find that the colors are more true they're not I uh, this is my photo box right here by the way um which is where I take pictures and most of the time when I'm filming, I'm not using it. I'm using just direct light, and I find it washes out the color of the yarn. So what you just saw was really true to color. 
Anyways, I got to show you this. This is so exciting. I finally finished this. I mean, I've been talking about this little dragon for ages. I bought the pattern um, last year during a sale she was having. This is from Crafty Intentions. This pattern is called the Fire Dragon. And oh my gosh, is this a gorgeous dragon or what? I spent a lot of time planning this dragon. I actually bought yarn specifically for this dragon. I went to Ice Yarns and I bought the Rockabilly yarn. Beautiful, soft yarn to make this dragon. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. The yarn is beautiful. It is slippery. I mean, this was put in my whips and ignored for a while because of how slippery the yarn is. With amigurumi, of course, you have to have a really tight tension. And when your yarn is that slippery, it's hard to keep a tight tension. So I had the body done for, and the body and the head done for the longest time. But all these little details, like the wings, oh, I had the belly patch done too. The wings I didn't do for a while, the ears, the horn, the spine, this little tail detail. I didn't do any of those for the longest time, not because I didn't want to work on this little dragon, because this dragon is beautiful. Let me try to bring her into frame. I can't bring her any more into frame than that. Let me push it back. Anyways, I love the uh, pattern. The pattern is so beautiful. I love the yarn. And you know what? Considering what a hard time I had at first with this, by the end of it, I just loved working with the yarn, even with the tight tension. It just, it just felt good, and it just worked out so beautifully. And I really, really, really love this dragon. I, I think I made a mistake on it on um, this particular wing because it doesn't fold as nicely as this one. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I did wrong. I think I made a mistake, but I love it anyways. This is my dragon. It's not going anywhere. Um, I've made say since November four dragons and yes two of them went to my kids but this is the one that is mine I gave one to um, a friend uh, she turned nine I believe yeah and she is a dragon lover oh my gosh she's a dragon lover and so I had to give it to her and so those were done like she had it for her birthday this is my fourth dragon and hopefully this year I will be making a ton of more dragons. I I have like a few more patterns, but more than that is just, I love making these dragons. They're so beautiful. They're so intricate. This pattern is nice. It's easy. It's very clear. It's not easy. It's clear, but it is certainly not for beginners. She does have some stitches that she made up. Not hard to do, but if you don't know your stitches, it might be a little complicated and hard. But anyways, I love the dragon. I don't want to move the dragon, so I'm going to leave it there while I show you my next foe. This is Avocado. Avocado is, comes, is an imaginary friend that comes from the imagination of a little girl or boy who loves avocados and desperately wants a cat. This is Avocado. I made it specifically for ITR for the August edition. Now, Avocado does not stand up on its own, so I got to kind of hold on nope she's not going to stand up or he's not going to stand up by herself I think it's a she because it's my daughter's it was her birthday present uh we went to children's place not too long ago to buy her some clothes and uh she saw a t-shirt that had an avocado on it and she asked me to make it we didn't buy the t-shirt but I did remember that I promised to make her an avocado and here is avocado holding on to her pit her little pit right there. I love the way she's holding. I mean, obviously, it's my pattern from my imagination. But, I mean, I did it because I liked it. I thought it was cute. Uh, there's the little tail. And this one is going to be... Um, I made it going with the theme of the In the Round magazine August edition, which is imaginary friends and or fairy tale creatures. Uh, not fairy tale creatures. Um, I guess fairy tale creatures. I don't remember exactly what it was, but uh, I made it for that. I have sent it out as an application. Uh, hopefully it'll be published. And if it isn't, you could still buy it from my Ravelry store in uh, August. Because, <laughs> you know, if you're gonna get it in the magazine, it has to get to the magazine first. And uh, I just wanted to 
say, speaking of ITR magazine, the July edition dropped yesterday, so you can buy it from Ravelry. It's a digital magazine right now. And my little hot air balloon is in it. Yeah. Hello, hot air balloon. Did I show you my hot air balloon? Yeah, I showed it last time as one of my uh, uh, foes. But I show it to you again because she made it or it made it into the magazine. And if you want it, you could buy it at the magazine right now in Ravelry or you could, you know, wait till I sell it in my store. It's up to you, whatever you want. My little plug-in. <laughs> so as for my foes, I do have two foes, only one of which I can show you because the other one is a test. It's a mermaid. Uh, yes, I make amigurumi. I make lots of, lots of amigurumi. But I have started making bags and shawls, as you can see. And I am working on this shawl. Isn't it so pretty? This is, I mean, I'm really at the beginning. I'm. This is a project, I mean shawls. I think I really like working on shawls, but not, I don't think I could do it all the time. I don't think I could start a shawl and finish it. Oof. Okay, is that better? All right. I don't think I could start a shawl and finish it and have it be the only project that I'm working on because it is very repetitive. And since I, I mean, it's kind of obvious since I like amigurumi that I want something with a bit more challenge and a little bit more different. Like amigurumi, there are a few rows that, this, that are the same or a few rounds that are the same, but for the most part, it's always changing. Shawls are not always changing. So I don't think I could ever work on a shawl um, exclusively, but it's nice to have when you're working on an amigurumi project that's a little challenging and you're like, I need a break from this, but at the same time, you still want to crochet. Then I pick up my shawl. Here it is, really pretty. I really like it. It's the Darn Good Yarn Shawl. Um, Darn Good Yarn Fingering Weight Star Stitch Shawl. It is a free pattern if you're a member of Darn Good Yarn, I am not sure if it costs money or if it's free if you're not a member. I, I get the boxes, oh, which by the way, I still have not got my June box. Do you know what date it is? It's July 2nd. Okay, there is a reason I did call contact them and I wish they had contacted me because I paid for it in the end of May and I didn't get it and they really, should have uh, I think they should have contacted me and told me that it was going to be late am I being picky am I being rude I just feel like okay here's the thing Nepal is having a hard time sending out its stuff it is you know COVID does mess around with everything and um, they haven't been able to sell, send out the box 13 which is the box that I would have gotten in June the box 13 surprise item it's still in Nepal they're waiting for it they're going to sh get a shipment whenever they get a shipment and then they're going to send it out to me um, that's all good I could understand I am not unreasonable I understand that COVID is messing up a lot of stuff but I feel like you charged me in May for it and it is now July I haven't received it shouldn't I have heard from you guys like, I really feel it would have been nice for you to say, hey, we're having a little bit of delay with box 13. Thank you for held, holding on or uh, we'll get it out to you as soon as we can. I just feel like, you know, it's just common courtesy to tell me that something's going to be late. I mean, if I was meeting somebody and I was late, I would call the person and say, hey, I'm going to be late because of such and such reason or not because of such and such reason. And especially if you paid for something, I feel like I paid for it and I'm waiting for it. And I know I spent money on that and I am not receiving it. What the heck is going on? I don't feel like I should have been the one who had to reach out. As soon as you knew it was delayed, you should have contacted me. Meanwhile, I've already paid for my uh, July one. And I still haven't gotten my June one, which is box 13 and box 14. Hopefully there won't be a delay in box 14 too. I don't know right now. Um, I, I have to say this, and I don't mean 
to be mean in any way. I do like the yarn. I have used the yarn. But the fact that they didn't contact me after not sending me the box for a month has shaken my my faith in them a little bit. So I will have to think about what I'm going to do in the future on whether I'm going to continue to have a darn good yarn box or not. Um, we'll see. For now, I'm going to get the July one. Hopefully I'll get the June one. And then I'll see what I do. But I love the shawl. I went out in a completely different tangent that I wasn't even planning to talk about. <sighs> sorry. This is my shawl. Oh, sorry. I hit my uh, tripod. This is my shawl. I'm really enjoying working on it. I really, really like it. I'm using Lion Brand Summer Nights, which is a um, super fine weight yarn. And it is so soft and it is so beautiful. Uh, what hook am I using? I'm not using a G hook. It calls for a slightly smaller hook than this. I'm using a four millimeter hook. Uh, because I tend to crochet tight, I've decided whenever I'm making something that is not amigurumi, that I will just go for a bigger hook so that I will compensate for the gauge not being right. I'm not making test any things. I mean, if it was clothes like that, where the size matters, I would have made a gauge uh, test or whatever they're called. I don't know even. I don't even know what they're called. But I didn't for this. I'm. I don't usually do it. Um, with amigurumi, I'm gonna one day make a video on how I choose my hooks. But I have certain hooks that I use for certain yarns, and I stick to it. Um, all the time. Like if I'm wearing using worsted, worsted weight yarn, I always use a 3.25 millimeter. Or if I find like it's on a lighter end, a thinner end of worst aid, I, I use a 2.75. This one right here was with, done with a 2.75 millimeter. I have like set hooks that I use for each yarn and I just go for it. But with these uh, projects, it turns out too small. It really does. So I start, I decided I'm always going to go a hook size bigger when I'm making anything non amigurumi anyways this is my whips and foes i hope you like them i love the dragon i love all of them i mean i really do um this little guy was a big headache oh designing is hard guys it's hard it did not i had an idea and it looked awful was my first idea so then i had a second idea and Although the execution of the second idea would have been different, it still would have looked very similar to as it is now. Just the the way I made it, the way it was being made was different, and that idea didn't work. So I essentially ripped out this project so many times. Like I ripped it out. The only thing that remained constant is the pit right here. From start to finish, this pit stayed the same. And everything else got ripped out, worked again, ripped out, worked again, ripped out, worked again. Oh, designing is hard, guys. I still like doing it. I love the challenge. But I thought I should never think this anymore. Every time I thought, oh, this is going to be a quick, easy project to design. I'll be able to do it like within a few days, uh, within a day. I should stop myself from saying stuff like that because every single time I have said something like that, it turned out to be one of amongst the hardest projects. I mean, yes, the dolls I make are a little harder to design, but I kind of know that, that it's going to be hard and it doesn't take me by surprise that it's hard. Whereas these ones that I underestimate how much or overestimate my abilities and I underestimate how much it's going to take to make it. They get really frustrating. Do I like my avocado? I think so. But it's hard to tell uh, when you worked on something this hard and you ripped it out so many times that you look at the finished project and you're like, is this right? 
um, I always need a little bit of distance. Like for instance, my kitty corn, it was the same story. I made it and ripped it out and made it and ripped it out and made it. I actually ended up making a separate head out of Karen Simply Soft because I was using, I love this cotton to make kitty corn, which you could see if you go in my store or on Instagram, it's posted. And it had, uh, it was sparkly yarn. It had that tinsel on it. And I was frogging so much that the tinsel was starting to fall off that I switched yarns so that I didn't ruin the yarn before I got to make my project. Um, but that's one of my favorite projects. It's like amongst my patterns, kitty corn is really high up there. But when I finished it, I was like, I never want to see you again. I don't like you. You did not turn out right. Um, so I will reserve judgment on how I feel about avocado. I think I like it. But right now, avocado, after all the frustration she caused me, I am not sure I could say I love this pattern. I hope you guys do though. <laughs> I think I like it more when I have some more distance from it. You know, in a couple of weeks, I'll probably be like, oh my gosh, look at avocado. She's so cute. But right now, I think I'm still feeling frustrated by the fact that it wasn't working and I was trying so hard to make it and it didn't work properly. And then I had to redo it and then frog it. And designing is hard, guys. It really is. I love it. I love doing it. It's challenging. And I was just telling my daughter the other day, if I didn't find amigurumi challenging, I wouldn't be, not be making amigurumi stuff. So I do love the challenge. I love making something challenging. I love it. It's more worthwhile to me if it's harder to make than if it's easier to make. But that being said, when it's your own work start to finish, like a design is, from if I'm working with someone else's complicated patterns, I love it already. I saw the finished project. I loved it and I bought it. I already love it. When you're working with your own ideas and you're making it up from start to finish by yourself, you don't know if you like it at the end. I don't know if I like Avocado. Well, I think I like her. She's growing on me. I hope you like her. I really do. She was a lot of work. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I did go off on many many tangents and i hope that's okay with you guys um if you like the video please like the video if you want to see more of uh from me more of my work more of my tips and tricks or anything else that i do please subscribe to me um i'll see you next time bye